Hello again everyone and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where today's video is going to be about a Minolta SLR camera. Uh, in this case it's going to be the camera which I regard as the best of Minolta's SLRs and that would be uh, the XD series. Uh, in Japan the first version was known as the XD. In Europe and America it was called the XD2 and there was a variation sold only here in Japan which was called the XDS and that is the example which I will be showing you today. But pretty much everything, uh, the XDs were pretty much all the, the same camera. Uh, there were a few slight variations during their production run but basically my review here of this particular camera will apply to all of the XD series. So, uh, the XD was released by Minolta in 1977 and I kind of regard this as the, the golden era of uh, film photography and film cameras. Uh, the late 70s was at a time when technology was uh, sufficiently advanced to uh, allow a camera to very precisely meter light and to take very accurate exposures, but also uh, to give, you know, cameras still had a classic uh, style in those days and more of a, a mechanical way of operating compared to nowadays or later cameras which were made of plastic and which substituted levers and dials for push buttons and menus and things like that. I really love this particular camera. I love the size. I love the style. I love the fit and finish. It's just a beautiful camera. Uh, it's, yeah, Minolta really did a wonderful job when they were working on the XD. And I can't really give Minolta all the credit for this camera because this camera was designed in partnership with the Leica company of Germany. And in those days, Minolta and Leica were working together on several different projects, <clears throat> a couple of different rangefinder cameras, as well as uh, the XD series. And Leica used uh, the XD chassis as the foundation for its uh, mid-series uh, R uh, SLR cameras, such as the R4 through the R7. Uh, those cameras had a little bit of different, I guess, uh, styling uh, features to them and a few different, uh, I guess, uh, technical features. Uh, some of them featured a spot metering mode and such, but the basic chassis on the Leica R4 through R7 is the same as the XD series. And this wonderful black uh, finish was also invented by Leica. This is a nice hard anodized finish and it was the kind which was used on Leica's black chrome cameras, say like the, the M4, M6 and other versions. And uh, it, it's a really wonderful finish. It has a wonderful satiny look to it. Uh, it's very durable. It doesn't scratch or chip like paint does. And the hardness of it increases the hardness of the top cover and makes it a little bit harder for these cameras to be dented or scratched. And also it just looks really good. So it's a very beautiful finish. Uh, these cameras had a pretty good production run uh, from uh, 77 uh, all the way up until the mid 1980s. And uh, among, or I guess to many people, this, these were pretty much the, the best uh, camera, 35 millimeter camera, which Minolta made back in, I guess, the metal camera series. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the XDS. And we're going to go ahead and start at the top here. Uh, here we have the rewind knob lever, pretty much the, the same thing which comes on 90% uh, of cameras, nothing new there. Uh, below that we have the dial which you use to set your film speed. So when you are buying film, you look at what speed film it is, like 100, 200, 400, whatever. And when you load it in the camera, you set this dial here uh, by pushing this lock button. And you, you just uh, turn it until the number in the window matches the film speed uh, loaded in the camera. There's an exposure compensation dial here, and this allows you to uh, uh, get accurate exposures in places where the light is very difficult. Uh, if you like to go skiing, it's very difficult uh, to get the snow white because the camera tends to, uh, 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 I guess, uh, underexpose or uh, underexpose in order to, to try to make the white look more like gray. And if you're shooting at something which is black, it does the opposite. It tries to increase exposure and makes it look like gray. So in order to make white things white and black things black, uh, the exposure compensation control is a really wonderful feature. 
Over here we have a shoe for mounting a flash. Uh, this, uh, this is a hot shoe and you can operate pretty much any modern flash on this camera. It has a 1 100th uh, flash sync speed, which uh, is not so much by uh, today's standards, but by the standards of the late 70s it was pretty good when you consider the much more expensive uh, Nikon cameras and like Canon professional cameras had a 1 60th uh, flash sync speed. And this camera can use the older Minolta flashes with uh, automatic operation. That's what the, the small extra electrode here is for extra contact. Over here we have the shutter speed button and we have a full range of speeds from bulb up to one one thousandth of a second. One of the cool things about this camera is it has multiple shooting modes, uh, three modes to be uh, exact. Uh, first we have a manual mode and that allows you to set the aperture and manual or uh, shutter speed manually like on pretty much any old film camera. And uh, you can use the built-in light meter uh, visible on the inside of the viewfinder to uh, help you find the correct aperture and shutter speed. Uh, the next setting is aperture priority. And what this setting does is you simply set the aperture uh, level you want for the amount of depth of field or light to get through the lens, and the camera will automatically choose the best shutter speed for that situation. If you want, uh, if you're shooting in darker situations or you want less depth of field, you would open up the lens, and that would increase the shutter speed. And as you stop down the lens, so say as the, the sun gets uh, uh, or things, you know, the sun gets brighter, or you want more depth of field, uh, the camera would choose a slower shutter speed. The last feature is a shutter priority automatic mode, and this was the first camera, the XD series, was the first uh, uh, camera to come with this, SLR camera, I should say. It was a common feature on old rangefinder cameras. But with the shutter speed, uh, sh shutter app priority, you would simply choose the, the minimum shutter speed, you would like, uh, and this is very popular when you are shooting at things which are, you know, you, you don't want the camera to shake. So let's say you set it at um, 60 of a second or faster, and that reduces the chance of your photos being blurred from you moving the camera. When you set to that speed, the camera will automatically set the, the best aperture for that speed. Uh, the advantage to that is like if you were you know you were shooting with the camera in aperture priority mode and you move to a, like a darker uh, situation and you forget to open up the aperture and you go and you take a photograph the shutter will be open for a long time sometimes several seconds and it's not really possible to hold the camera still for that long so you're likely going to get a blurred uh, image if you are using the shutter priority uh, uh, setting uh, you can set the minimum shutter speed and then you won't have to worry about the camera choosing a really long shutter speed and giving you blurred images. In the center here we have a uh, shutter release, uh, the bu shutter release button is in the center and it accepts a standard cable release and of course here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever and over here we have the film counter window. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is this kind of foolproof system which uh, Minolta had on these cameras to make them very beginner friendly. We have a green number here on the aperture ring, we have a green number here on the shutter speed ring, and we have green on the S here. So if you've never shot a 35mm SLR camera before, Minolta says if you set all these settings to green, you can go out and shoot and the camera should take acceptable photographs. And as you get more confident in using the, the settings on the camera, you can begin to experiment with other things. But it's a pretty good system. Um, some of the earlier cameras didn't have the green uh, 1 1 25th setting, so, uh, but uh, as far as I know, it should still work if you want to try to use it in this, I guess, uh, default uh, way. Uh, moving to the back here, we have a conversion table on this film card holder, uh, which was obsolete even when it was made, but uh, uh, photographers were kind of like a, 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 a cranky conservative bunch, or at least they used to be, and there were a lot of old schoolers who didn't like the more modern ISO ASA system, and they, they steadfastly stuck to the old DIN system, and so... Uh, uh, it seems kind of silly, but uh, up until the 70s and even in the 80s, you could find these conversion things on these cameras. Uh, they were more useful back in the 1940s and 50s when people were still using that old system. But, uh, but you know, it was obsolete long before this camera was made. But anyway, uh, Japan is probably the world capital for cranky old guy photographers and uh, who are the, who are very set in their old-fashioned ways. So uh, I guess this is more of a Japanese thing than than anything else. Up here we have the one thing which sets the, the XDS camera apart from cameras available in other markets and that's a diopter adjustment which allows you to 
adjust the viewfinder in this camera to match your uh, 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 eyesight. So uh, this wasn't a feature which uh, was uh, available overseas, and that makes this camera kind of special. Uh, you, you know, you can only find these in Japan. And uh, some people who might be, I don't know, uh, a little bit uh, into stereotypes might say this is because uh, you know, lots of Japanese wear eyeglasses. And uh, yeah, that's probably true. Uh, the viewfinder here still has the dovetailed uh, uh, bezel around the outside for attaching a, say, uh, uh, what do they call it, an eye cup. Or uh, on the other cameras, if they don't have this system here for adjusting the diopters, you can just slide on a diopter adjustment uh, lens on the back. Uh, on the bottom here, we have some uh, interesting features. We have, uh, uh, of course, the, an addition for a motor drive. And this is one of the first motor-driven cameras which uh, Minolta made, or at least mass-market ones. Um, they had their earlier uh, X-series, uh, the professional camera known as the X1 here in Japan and known uh, in other countries by a different model name. But those, you need a specific motor drive body uh, and motor drive. You, you had to buy the whole shebang together. Whereas this camera, you could use the camera and just get a separate motor drive. We have the release button here for uh, unlocking the film mechanism so you can rewind the film when you've used it all up. We have a standard quarter inch tripod socket and we have the battery chamber here. Uh, this camera will work with ordinary LR44 or SR44 batteries. You'll need two of them. Uh, moving to the front of the camera, on this side here we have a depth of field preview. We have a sync socket for attaching uh, a flash extension cord or using a remote flash. Here we have the release button, which you depress to remove the lens, and normally it works easier than that. And this camera will fit both the, the uh, what is this, the MD row core lens. You can also use the earlier MC row core lenses, and this gives you a huge variety of lens options for these cameras. Uh, the Minolta MC and uh, MD row core lenses are very common. They're not very expensive, and you can find one pretty much for uh, any style of photography. This particular one is fitted with a 28mm f2.8 lens, which is a wonderful wide angle lens. Uh, one, the 28mm is probably my, my favorite lens beside the 50mm, and I probably use the 28mm more, especially here in Japan where you know the, the streets and the alleys are a little bit uh, tighter and the rooms are smaller. I'm able to get more onto a frame of film with this lens than I can with the 50mm lens. Uh, yeah, uh, wonderful lenses, and these Rokor lenses, you know, the MC lenses were excellent lenses, the MD lenses were more modern, lighter weight, a little bit more compact, but still wonderful performers. Anyway. Uh, moving over to this side here, we have the self-timer lever, and of course we have the lugs for mounting the strap. Uh, overall, uh, this camera, when it comes to rating these old SLR cameras, this is one of the few which I would give a 10 out of a 10. Uh, the only thing which I think it could use, which would make it uh, an 11 out of a 10, would be a, a faster shutter speed. We're limited to a 1 1,000th of a second uh, shutter speed here. And for lenses, well, if, if I like to shoot the 28mm lens or other lenses like that, which are not particularly fast, uh, this is an entirely perfectly usable range of shutter speeds. And nowadays we can't easily find 1600 or 3200 speed films anymore. The most common speeds are probably going to be like 1, 2, or 400. So 1 1,000th is perfectly good for that. Uh, if you are trying to shoot with the, the f1.2 lens, the Rokor lenses, the 58mm or the 50mm, uh, you're going to have a little bit of a uh, tough time using them outdoors unless you're using neutral density filters. But uh, indoors, you know, it should work just fine. And uh, yeah, well, that's pretty much it uh, for my review here of the Minolta XDS camera. Uh, I'll be listing this for sale shortly in my stores. I think I already have one available right now with a 50 millimeter lens. I'll be listing this one here uh, later on to today with a few other cameras. Uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, I'm trying to get more cameras listed and also make more videos. And if you visit my shops, especially my Etsy store, you'll see I have a lot more in stock now than I usually have. And I hope to have uh, a lot more uh, being added as the days go by. But anyway, uh, if you'd like to see more videos about classic film cameras, vintage cameras, uh, please subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, please like it. Uh, that helps bring more people here and uh, kind of helps get the word out. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching my video and I hope to see you again soon.